Community Cats podcast. Ready? Let's go. Welcome to the Community Cats podcast. I am your host, Stacey LeBaron. I've been involved helping homeless cats for over 20 years with the Merrimack River Feline Rescue Society. The goal of this podcast is to expose you to amazing people who are improving the lives of cats. I hope these interviews will help you learn how you can turn your passion for cats into action. Today, we're speaking with Liz Illig. Liz is the owner of a small business called Puff and Fluff in Phoenix, Arizona. She's also a consultant for other local business owners in the Valley. Ever since she was little, she's had a very strong passion for animals and their parents. Besides being a business owner, she's also a member of the board of directors for Gabriel's Angels, a local nonprofit that helps at-risk children through the use of therapy pets. Because she's very community-oriented, she does lots of fundraisers for Gabriel's Angels, along with other local rescues and shelters. Currently at her shop, she's working on a large adoption event project with the rescues in her area. For this, they'll be opening their doors on a day that they're not normally open so that foster parents can bring their adoptable cats and dogs in for free grooming. The community is also then welcome to come and find their new family member through adoption. Liz, I'd like to welcome you to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Very excited to be here with you. Some folks might think it's kind of interesting that we're talking about grooming, but first, before we take a deep dive in the current work that you're doing, could you share with us how you got started and how you got passionate about animals? Yes. So at a very early age, I'm originally from Iowa, born and raised, and my family comes from farming. So we, of course, had cats and dogs and livestock. So pets have always been a part of who I am. Um, And so when I moved out to Phoenix, Arizona to go to Arizona State University, I started pet sitting, taking that love for animals. And so I um, pet sit for about 10 years and then I got a bank of customers in my portfolio, so I decided to find a business that was complementary with pets, and so I found a local pet grooming shop that I purchased from somebody that was retiring, and from there, we've just expanded in the Phoenix area, and I have four valley locations, and we also do pet sitting as well. So it's interesting that you decided to go in the direction of pet grooming rather than rescue. I mean, you have a a love and passion for animals. Was there something specific about grooming that interested you? Well, I've always been super huge on creating a community of of pet lovers. So basically, I just looked at it and I thought, what does everybody always need? And they always need to keep the hygiene of their pets. And so I thought it was a very complimentary business to start along with my pet sitting. So I thought they kind of went hand in hand because when I was a pet sitter, I would always take people's pets in for grooming for uh, my clients. And so I thought, hey, this this would work out really, really well. Many people don't think about grooming with regards to cats very often or taking their cats to a groomer. Have you seen that change over the years or do you see that attitude changing? Yes. So when I bought my business about five and a half years ago, the pet lifestyle and pet parent has changed a lot in five years. And so when I first started this business, I maybe saw maybe 10 cats a year. And I'm talking like summertime, they would get groomed. Now at uh, one of my current locations, we probably average about 30 cats a week, just one shop. So people are definitely bringing their cats in for either nail trims um, is one of the services, a bath and brush service and or a bath and brush with a haircut. And so we see a lot of elderly cats just because they're not able to groom themselves as well as when they age. And so we've definitely seen a wide range of elderly cats that just aren't able to cleanse themselves the way like they used to. I had an, a long-haired older cat one point in time, mm-hmm. and she would have to have vanity cuts and also lion's mane's cuts, I guess you call them. Um, yes. And so there's a lot of different types of cuts that cat can get. We were also talking about the importance of cat grooming for foster care, but you were talking uh, before we started the recording a bit about the reality that grooming a cat can be expensive and that you had some ideas 
to be able to help, especially folks who are doing foster care, you know, how they might be able to get their foster kitty groomed and have it not be super expensive. Yes, cat grooming tends to be usually 40 to $50 more on an average cost. So it's significantly a larger amount out of pocket for grooming. And so, you know, there's only certain groomers that groom cats. Not every single groomer can groom a cat. You know, we take pride in having really good groomers that are calm and passionate. A cat feeds off people's energy. And so the person working on that cat needs to be very gentle and kind and understanding. Standing. And so that's kind of one of those key elements of finding the right person to groom your cat. It's going to be very calm. Cats are so smart. <laughs> and so mm-hmm. you really need to make sure that you're, you're giving off that really good energy for that cat to have a really good experience. Because of it's a high ticket item, we at our shops do discounted services. So we have local rescues and fosters. They can come in and get 50% off of the service. That means that the cat groomer is getting paid, but the business is not getting paid. So it's basically just paying for the groomer to perform the service. We also do, like you had mentioned on the bio, is we are doing a day where fosters can just bring their pets specifically cats, into the shops and to do some fun haircuts on them and or bath and brushes, just get them to look really, really nice. We're also going to have a photographer there taking pictures of the cats. They don't get adopted that day. Uh, when we open it up to the public, they're going to have some pictures that they can take home and be able to, you know, add on the website to get these cats adopted out, you know, uh, fairly quickly. It's one of those things to call around, you know, in your local town or city and to see who is doing these discounted services because I believe that we're not just the only ones doing this. There's so many cats that need to be rescued and find homes that I'm sure that there are many grooming shops that would want to help. For those of uh, the folks that might be at home and feeling for whatever reason they can't bring the kitty in, do you have any tips for folks? things that they can do for home care for a cat. Obviously, we never want to hear about somebody taking a pair of scissors trying to cut out a snarl from a kitty's backside, that kind of thing. But I would have to say, I bet you there have been people that have tried doing something like that. What can we do at home in order to try and help these kitties be able to not end up being one big matted mess? So I would definitely say to get a brush and a comb. So a lot of people tend to brush out their cats. Sometimes they have like really fine hair. So they're brushing out the cat. Brushing is only going to get the top layer. It's not going to get where the hair starts at the skin. So you could brush for a period of time but still not be able to get through the tangles. So you're going to want to brush first and then you're going to want to comb. And you want to comb where the surface of the skin is all the way up and through the top coat. And so that tends to be, you know, people are always coming in and saying, you know, well, I brush my cat and, and that's great. But in order to make sure that it's a mat free cat, is you're really going to need to use a comb at that first layer. And also, a lot of people think that, oh, I'll just give my cat a bath. That can be challenging unless you know you've, you've started at a at a at a very young age and that cat is used to the water. But if you don't comb or brush your cat before a bath, it's going to create mats. Water is going to seep into the hair where there might be a mat if you didn't brush it and comb it out, and it's going to make it tighter as it dries. And so people think, oh, I'll just brush or comb after. You want to make sure that's done before. If you don't want to do a bath at home, there's also dry shampoo for cats that you can apply, and it's like a powder. There's many products out there that I highly recommend for that. That's kind of an option for a non-bath. We're proud to be an affiliate of Space Kitty Express, makers of handmade, refillable catnip alternative cat toys. Think Valerian, Silver Vine, Honeysuckle, etc. for the discerning cat who wants to try something new or doesn't respond to catnip. You can even get 10% off your purchase at Space Kitty Express by using the code COMMUNITYCATS at checkout. Help your kitty blast off today with some new toys from www.spacekittyexpress.com. 
Did you miss the 2018 online cat conference that we held in January? Or would you like to share some of the conference webinars with friends? You can now purchase the presentations and share them with colleagues and friends. Just visit our recordings page, which is under the resources tab, to access webinars from some of the leading personalities in feline welfare today. They're sure to give you and your cat-loving friends great ideas on ways to help even more cats. Check it out at www.communitycatspodcast.com. Some of the cats that I've had in my life and that I have seen in the shelter when I worked at the Merrimack River Feline Rescue Society, they would often have either very dandruffy or very greasy coats. Should we be doing better food supplements or like putting oil in their food? You know, is it an internal and an external issue? Yes. One thing that tends to help skin, irritated skin like that is coconut oil. And so you can apply that, you know, on their food. And most animals do like the taste of the coconut oil, but that would definitely be something they would want to just check out to make sure that the vet recommends that. But we do tend to recommend that with vet supervision. And that will help even out the fur and the skin texture and that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Coconut oil is now seems to be one of those items that fixes a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> Makes everybody feel feel good. So if the cat doesn't like yes. it, you can put it on your own skin and it'll make you feel better and, yes. and stress-free. Yes. <laughs> trending coconut oil. <laughs> so as I continue on the theme of uh, stress, you know, you have purchased and expanded your business to, you know, a relatively larger business now, but you've started out as a small business. You have a fantastic website and some phenomenal social media. I just thought I would ask you, many of our listeners have small nonprofits. They're struggling, you know, they're tra- trapping up until two o'clock in the morning at night. Then they're taking the kitties to the local spay-neuter clinic to get spayed or neutered, taking the kittens to foster care, or just bringing them home and setting them up in their own foster room or bathroom to take care of the kittens before they're ready for adoption. They're doing all of these different things, and yet they also have to do their social media their website updates, their marketing, their fundraising. Would you have any tips or advice on how to handle the stress and be able to keep the balance? My one thing that I always recommend when I'm uh, doing consulting is, you know, we all have a lot of ideas and things that we want to do within our business, but we just sometimes don't fund the time. And so I highly suggest every person to sit down, not on their computer, sit down in a room by themselves and put a timer on for 15 minutes and do a brain dump of all the things that you want to do via social media, any themes, anything that you need to focus on in your business. Do a brain dump is the first thing. Once that timer's up, then in the next few days, you're going to review a list you got from the brain dump, and you can start building a content calendar and or a to-do list for anything, website changes and updates. And, And what I mean by a content calendar is the one thing that I've found to be very helpful is to create a content calendar per month on themes any focus areas, anything you want to educate your customer or client on. And take that time and you can build out a whole content calendar year. And so you kind of then maybe in three months, maybe you don't have time right now to do your website, but maybe in three months. And so build out an Excel sheet of here's the focus areas, here's national holidays that we can talk about. There's so many things. Here's educational posts that we're going to talk about. And move through that so it's not so overwhelming because I think that our to-do list just becomes so crazy and we have these really good ideas but we never sit down to actually focus on those ideas and so I just think it's really important to constantly have brain dumps timed ones that you can make sure that you're getting the things that you think about on paper. Yeah, I think that's an excellent idea, you know, as long as you're committing to be able to come back. But even if you don't come back to it, there is value in doing that because you get it out of your head and so you actually end up opening up more space in your head for clarity for what it is you're doing right at that moment. Even if you do have your brain dump and you put it aside, you put it in a pile of papers and you don't find it until you do your spring cleaning or whatever, it still, I think it actually is helpful because you have cleared out some clutter from your mind and enabled you to focus a little bit more, I think, too. 
Yeah, and I, I tend to be a visual person, so if I write it down and read it again or read it, you know, the one time after I do it, I just feel like I, just like you said, like clear it from my mind or expand on it, right? And maybe go back and circle the five things that are most important and then start working towards that. Or put it to the side and come back to it in six months, but at least you start looking at the direction you want to move to and or the to-do list and find out what's really important because a lot of us tend to work in our businesses and not on our businesses. And so it just kind of depends on where you are in your business. Very well put. Tell me a little bit about uh, Gabriel's Angels. What's that group about? So they take pets and they take the pets into schools, shelters, and help kids that are at risk move through issues that they have at home. Uh, They actually have a reading program where the kid reads to the child because, you know, the pet there is not going to know if they mispronounced a word. And so pets just seem to be a little bit more gentle with the children. So it's just helping at-risk children in the community. They teach hygiene on pets. And so they bring in toothbrushes and combs. And so it's just really is showing really good behavior on how you treat pets. How do they connect the children with the therapy pets? Do they meet at a community center or or is there a specific location? Yes. So there's schools. There's also some shelters that Gabriel Angels works with. And so they, they partner up with other nonprofit organizations to be able to go into these facilities. Yes, because I've seen some things on like social media where like kids will go into shelters and you see them sitting there with the dogs, you're reading the book to them. And and in some cat situations, I've seen that fewer, but some. This sounds like it's a little bit different than that. Yes. I think this is just absolutely fascinating. We are moving up on Halloween. And so being a groomer and knowing that especially I've seen dogs, dressed up and decorated for all kinds of Halloween characters. What are your thoughts on uh, dressing up cats for Halloween? And is that something that when it's Halloween time, your shops do anything wild and crazy for the cats and the dogs? Yes, the Halloween decor is out. The costumes (laughs) are out. Um, In full swing, people are getting crazy ideas on what they want their pets to to be for Halloween. You know, a lot of people are not having children, and so the pets are are their children, so they want to be able to have some fun and play around with their pets. So we definitely have costumes for sale. I always say with costumes, you can give it a go, but if if your pet is uncomfortable, it's not something that you want to keep on your pet for a period of time. It just depends on what their comfort level is. And so I always say, don't struggle with your pet if they don't want to wear a costume. Some of the pets that don't want to wear a costume, we have a few options. We definitely do nail polish so we can paint cats nails, dog nails. So that's really popular. And we also can put some glitter on it. There was something on social media a few weeks back about this girl went and got her nails done and then she got her cat nails done and they did the same color. <laughs> so oh my they kind of got creative. <laughs> they both got manicures and the manicures were the same color. So that was a trending post recently. We also do pet safe hair coloring. Hmm. So we've been doing it for about two years. So somebody might just get the cat's tail spray painted just to have some fun. It is pet safe. Um, And we also, we have a process of how we do it. So it's not like you should just go and like grab spray paint and do it. On your pet, uh, we actually have a process that, you know, we allow the dry time so that when the cat's on your sofa, it's not going to bleed onto your sofa. So people tend to do it at home and have have a little mess Mm. there. So I always say, read the instructions to make sure, you know, if you are doing it at home that it's being applied appropriately and being careful with that. So those tend to be the three items where people are buying things for their pets and or services. And the, the coloring is permanent? It has to grow out like with people hair? It will come out with a bath. Okay. So you would have to bring it back in for a bath or it will eventually just kind of fade away. Are most of your cat clients purebred cats, or do you see a lot of mixed breeds? Mixed breeds, yeah. We're seeing a lot of mixed breeds in in Arizona. We we have a lot of feral cats, um, and so we have a lot of organizations that are trying to make sure that they're getting spayed and neutered. 
we support many rescues um, and organizations that just help get pets spay and neuter. And that's literally what the nonprofit is, just supporting them. So we always go to their yearly event to just make sure that, you know, we, we are being able to provide something to help the issue that we have here in Arizona. Liz, if folks are interested in finding out more about the work that you do and about your business, how would they find you? You can connect with us. We are going to be at Puff, P-U-F-F, and A-N-D, Fluff, F-L-U-F-F, Spa, S-P-A. You can find us on Instagram and or Facebook. Is there anything else you'd like to share with our listeners today? I would just encourage you to reach out to local grooming shops to see what kind of discounts, see what kind of promotions that they're offering so that if you do have a cat that's in need of grooming, that you get it taken care of and hopefully that somebody's willing to work with you on price because, you know, as hygiene is very important to us within our business and we want to make sure that the services is being taken care of but at a reasonable price. Well, Liz, I want to thank you so much for agreeing to be a guest on my show, and I hope we'll have you on again in the future. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for listening to the Community Cats Podcast. I would really appreciate it if you would go to iTunes, leave a review of the show. It will help spread the word to help more community cats. 